official activity of soft raw shindig. That's right. That's a week that the sophomore and freshman classes have decided to devote for themselves in their honor. And we have today as our kickoff speaker, so to speak, Mrs. Rosalind Wyman, incumbent councilwoman of the fifth, fifth district of which we are part. This week has been planned in conjunction with both classes for their benefit and for the benefit of the student body. Mr. Lloyd Schwartz is the freshman co-chairman and Mr. Ronald Javor is the sophomore co-chairman. And Ron would like to tell you a few things about the rest of the week. Uh, as Bob said, today is the week and Mrs. Wyman is appearing here. Tomorrow at noon, here in the ballroom, we will have a panel of several of her opponents here to speak and answer questions. Tomorrow night is the Joe and Eddie concert in Royce Hall. There are tickets still available for the concert, priced at $1.50, and you can buy two per person. These are still fairly good tickets left, so you can get over to the ticket office and buy them. Wednesday noon on Bruin Walk, we have a bottle cap contest, or at least a judging of that. This is to see which living group and which representatives from either the sophomore or freshman classes can bring in the most bottle caps. The prizes for these are three cases of Pepsi and a large trophy. Friday, we have our UCLA Olympics. In keeping with the tradition of a soft frosh brawl, but we've slightly changed it in that we have a number of individual contests, each one of them unique, never tried before, so that every winner will be setting a world's record. Have such contests as the eat, which is a pizza eat with no hands, the fastest person to eat it, a 53-yard co-ed carry, a <laughs> A bubblegum blow to see who can blow the biggest bubbles, and uh, let's see, I guess five more other contests. Signups are being held this week, or applications are available on Bruin Walk. So if you want to participate, you've got to get your application and return it by Wednesday noon. Uh, this will be held Friday afternoon from 3 to 5. Now, rather than to keep you anymore, I'd like to present Mrs. Wyman. Thank you very much. Uh for this opportunity uh, to come and share this uh, week with you. I feel uh, somewhat like President Kennedy did when he went down to Texas to speak before the Methodist ministers. Or I might uh, compare it to Daniel in the lion's den. Or I might even compare it to Martin Luther King, uh, Reverend Dr. Luther King uh, uh, meeting with uh, the three uh, governors from Mississippi, Alabama, etc. But I am aware that uh, UCLA or your sister small college uh, up north uh, often talks about the free speech movement. So I guess even Roz Wyman can speak on UCLA's campus. Um, not too long ago, uh, I spoke out here and the term used to the speech was UCLA is my beat. And a few weeks ago, I saw a little pamphlet that said beat Roz Wyman. So I'm getting very sensitive about that word, but uh, we, we political figures have to learn to give and take a little bit. <clears throat> I um, think about um, some of the things that have happened over the last few years uh, when I've been, I've been in pub public life and some of the things that you all might be interested in. Uh, who's, what electrician's running those lights? <laughs> that must be one of the opponents. Um, but anyway, uh, we find that um, I was very fortunate in my political career in the sense that I ran uh, when I was 22 years old for public life and I was to enter uh, law school and instead of running uh, or instead of going to law school I got kind of got involved in politics and then I decided that I'd take a chance and run for the city council and I was fortunate enough back when I was the age of 22 just graduated college and in the interim before going to law school I ran for public office and was fortunate enough to get elected and um, I found that uh, in that period, uh, lots happened to me and lots happened to the 5th District. When I took over the 5th District, there was, UCLA was going to be the total of 10,000 students and faculty. It was going to be a school of higher education, all the cream of the crops of all the UCLA or all the University of California campuses. Uh, the, the students were going to come here for graduate work. And uh, I remember, oh, that wasn't so long ago. And uh, now I guess the school's about 27,000. And uh, we find that uh, with the growth of the area and the growth of the city, 
a lot's changed. Um, I'm lucky. I got married along the line, and uh, I have three dividends by virtue of that marriage, and a lot's happened to the 5th District. When I first took over the 5th District, um, there was no high-rise buildings. The voters in this city, uh, the highest building was City Hall. And uh, we found that uh, that was the, the, the biggest building, and we never thought about anything being much more than 13 stories. But the voters went out in 1957, and they decided that um, uh, they were going to change that and that we were going to become a high-rise city and the sprawling Los Angeles was going to change. And I remember years back when uh, uh, you weren't on campus and uh, there used to be a, uh, we, used to, uh, we, we used to have uh, parades down through various parts of the city of Los Angeles. And then uh, along came a ruling and we said we would have no more parades. And I remember the approach by the students and faculty here and we had some meetings on it uh, whether we should have any more homecoming parades and whether this was good or bad uh, and uh, would it uh, be good for the community or not and would the students really want it. So I recall a few years back when we went to bat on uh, re retaining the uh, homecoming parades and getting them to go through the village <coughs> on a motion of mine to uh, have uh, the parades continued. And uh, I don't know if uh, in the last few years, I think bonfires have kind of taken the, parade, uh, the place of parades, but I know students really don't like bonfires much <coughs> and that uh, they really don't want to burn very much up during that uh, period. Although I've heard lately that some <coughs> famous markings have been burning up. <coughs> uh, in the city government, you've heard uh, a lot about um, uh, rubbish. Uh, <laughs> We talk about, for a long while, you, all you heard was whether or should the rubbish be uh, combined or shouldn't it be combined, or should it throw, be thrown in one tash, trash can or should it be thrown in two trash cans. And uh, many people say, well, what are the issues in city government? Well, we don't decide Vietnam and we don't decide uh, uh, major policies like this. Um, we decide other things, and one of them, uh, whether you like it or not, one of the issues was rubbish. And uh, we found that uh, an interesting thing happened to me the first day I was elected to public office. Uh, it was a very exciting day, to say the least, in our family. And uh, my family had gone down to City Hall to see me sworn in, and they were fairly proud, as most parents would be. Uh, I wasn't married yet, and I was still living at home, and hadn't become a taxpayer in the district yet. A year later, I became a taxpayer when I got married and uh, have been one since. But uh, at that point, um, uh, I had, we had been sworn in down at City Hall. And once you're sworn in uh, and take your office, then you're sworn at later. But uh, at that point, it was new and fresh and nice. And uh, I uh, had taken my oath. And uh, we were very excited, to say the least. And my parents had come down for the swearing in. And then they went home. And when I got home, I came home a couple hours later. And when I got home, uh, my mother was just fit to be tied. And I thought, well, gee, what's the problem? I, you know, I, she said, well, you just don't know what really problems are. And I said, well, mother, you're very happy, you know, a few hours ago. She said, well, I want you to know all the neighbors have been calling. And they want to know how in six hours of being in public office you could get things so messed up already. And I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, uh, the rubbish. You know, I never thought from my first day to office till the last day you'd still be hearing about it. They said the rubbish on this, this block in this area wasn't picked up, and they couldn't figure out how in one six hours uh, that had always been picked up. What what could I have done? So the phone had been ringing like mad. So when I got home, I called downtown, and I said, uh, "This is Councilwoman Weiner," and. Uh, I said, I've got a real problem. It's my home precinct. I carried this precinct. I didn't carry them all, but I carried this one. And I said, uh, uh, please uh, help me out. And at that point, I really wasn't sure exactly who you called. But uh, uh, pretty soon, about an hour later, up comes uh, down the street, clank, clank, up comes a truck and uh, picks up what, what hadn't been picked up. So all the neighbors then phoned in about an hour later. And they said, oh, we had faith in her. We knew she'd come through. So uh, you find that in public life, um, uh, sometimes it's the little things and sometimes it's the big things. Uh, I have been very ac active in city government uh, in 
some of the civil rights measures that uh, have come forth. And I don't know if you know um, how involved the city is and the city uh, uh, is in civil rights uh, problems. But a few years ago, before the FEPC was put in in the state, we every year would have a bill brought into the city government for a FEPC and city. And we always would lack one vote to get it through. And I was the co-author of this many times with Councilman, now uh, Congressman Edward Roybal. And finally, the state preempted this field and took it over, and uh, so we didn't have that problem. But the next problem we've had and we have now is a city human relations or human rights uh, commission. And uh, uh, I was uh, on the committee which brought forth a recommendation for the city to establish, establish a city human uh, rights section. We're the only major city in the United States that doesn't have one, or one of the only major cities. And I have always thought that in this day and age with the problems that we are having, that it certainly would be worthwhile to have a human relations section for the city. And uh, it also lost a few months ago by uh, fairly, well, it wasn't even close actually. It was overwhelming that it was defeated. But um, we now have come up with an alternate program, and I don't know how many of you know, but there is a human relations section or, uh, in the county. And so now we're thinking of combining a city and county human relations section. And uh, we would certainly, if any of you are interested in this, in this legislation, although most of you are not of voting age, but if your parents are and you feel that this is a worthwhile cause, if they would uh, um, let us uh, know, we think that uh, this would be a worthwhile program for the city. Some of you say, uh, what, what, what's the story on mass rapid transit? Uh, is there any, anything ever going to be done? What, what is the issue here? Well, one of the main issues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that it would cost to start a rapid transit district one billion dollars. Uh, and this is a tremendous sum of money. And uh, we have never had anybody in private enterprise who've come forth and said that they would like to uh, build a um, <laughs> private uh, uh, system in which would, um, they could operate and possibly make a profit. It takes so many years to make a profit that they are uh, not sure whether they are interested at all in building one in Los Angeles. So that I would think that some of the UCLA problems and some of, some of my problems at UCLA would be solved if we ever got a mass tra transit system. So I have been very active and interested in trying to push the MTA district, which is a state agency, to uh, get going on mass rapid transit. And I was hoping that they would have submitted something along the, very soon to the voters and so that they could have spoken out as they have spoken out in San Francisco and said we are in favor of mass rapid transit. And I think that is the only way we're going to get that is by submitting that to the vote of the people. Um, some of you um, uh, are most interested in the issues of um, city planning. I'm, I'm really not sure uh, if all of you follow closely the uh, city planning problems, but with the growth of Los Angeles, and I don't know how many of you are native born. I'm curious, uh, how many of you are native born? Could I see by the show of hands? Thank you. Uh, I'm a native of Los Angeles as well, but we find that most people uh, who've come here are, are transplanted, and uh, we find that the growth of Los Angeles during the war years, so many people came here and wanted to come back to live and rear their children and uh, live in this great climate that we had. And as I recall, I used to be a chamber of commerce for Los Angeles. I used to say how beautiful it was. You could go to the San Fernando Valley and see beautiful orange groves, and then you could go to the beach and swim, and then if you wanted to go up to the high Sierras, you could even get snow. So that <coughs> where else in the world could you do this all in one day? Yet we found that uh, with the growth of Los Angeles, I remember the first subdivision I had to, to vote on, in which uh, we had a, uh, to take a six acre parcel of orange grove, beautiful orange groves in the San Fernando Valley and vote to whether this should be changed to high rise, uh, or not high rise, but should be changed from residential into residential from agricultural. And I've often thought if the growth of Los Angeles, or if we could say let's stop tomorrow to plan, how uh, good this would be. And we could say no subdivisions, no high-rise buildings. We must stop and plan for the future. And uh, this would be uh, 
an excellent way of having time but under the Constitution of the United States it very clearly says a man has the right to develop his property and under that constitutional section uh, you can't withhold people from developing property unless uh, there is reasons and they don't meet the zoning laws or they don't meet the zoning restrictions etc so some of the uh, advanced city planning that we all would have uh, like to uh, plan for the future. We have master plan now being developed for Westwood. We hope will help this area a great deal. Uh, we have, um, I'm not sure though, uh, with the growth of uh, this whole area, what, what really will help it the most. But uh, I think, um, and I'm saving your favorite subject to discuss last. So um, I find that uh, uh, I figured that uh, in some of these uh, planning sessions that we have had. We have planning groups for West Los Angeles. We have citizens groups that meet and we are hoping to come forth with a new master plan for Westwood, but I'm not sure even if the new master plan will solve your immediate problems. But uh, I think that um, had we, had Los Angeles had a period, certainly not of recession, but a period of decline in the sense of, of people coming to live here, you could even have more time to plan. I don't know if you know that a thousand people a day cross the border to live in Southern California. And that's a lot of people to handle. And with the growth pattern, it's got to be more from the R1 or the single family dwelling, which was so well known in Southern California. The man who had the green patch of green in the back of his lawn and he had a barbecue and all that sort of thing seems to be being replaced by uh, high-rise buildings and some of the other problems. Now, down here, over here in Westwood, we're trying to get some parks and some of these problems, but yet land is so costly that you find that you can't just pick an area and say, oh, we'll put a park there. We have a half a million dollars, and yet a half a million dollars isn't sufficient to build a park. And uh, these are some of the problems you find with money, like you talk about mass transit. It costs a billion dollars to even get started. So <clears throat> some of the basic problems that we face in city government is taxes and uh, how much we can spend of the taxpayers' money and how we best suit these problems. Now, um, I think that uh, a subject uh, you're most interested in is uh, I've heard through the grapevine uh, and through the objective news printing of the Daily Bruin uh, <laughs> There's nothing like objective writing. But as I said, even the free speech movement might get to UCLA by uh, having me as a speaker. So I can uh, understand uh, what the problems were at Berkeley. Um, I um, think that um, there's probably little uh, way to uh, say to you today that your problem can be solved by my office or anybody who is going to possibly take my office. Uh, I think that. Um, the uh, facts of life are that <clears throat> you are here now and before students get to UCLA they really don't care very much about what happens to it and after students leave UCLA they really don't care much what happens to it as well. Some of us have, some of us have the <laughs> Some of us have the problem of representing government. Uh, uh, we, we have a continuing problem. We have a problem uh, that has continued from the growth of the school. About uh, 12 years ago, there was not a parking structure on campus. And uh, I recall going to, UC going to the state of California on three different occasions and appearing before the Educational Committee. And I don't know if most of you know, but the Education Committee uh, has for many years said in your appropriation that parking is not a part of education at UCLA. Now this is the state of California saying this. And uh, I made an appearance and said, if you don't think parking is a part of education at UCLA, you come down and see it. And so the State Education Committee for three years, my three appearances up there back when all of you were in high school, uh, in 1966, and, excuse me, 1956, 1957, 1958. And then and finally in 1959, we got a bill through. And I don't know how many of you know, there is one parking structure on this campus that has been built with uh, uh, the funds from the state of California. And we got a separate bill introduced by a legislator 
and to uh, bring forth the question that, uh, that parking had to go along with the growth of this university. And we in the city government uh, find that we have building laws. For an example, if a building is built anywhere in Los Angeles, say like a dormitory that might be built on this campus, and just say it's an apartment building that would be built in Los Angeles. This apartment building is built for every room in that apartment house under our city building laws. You have to build a parking space. But at UCLA, because you do not comply with city laws, that you comply with state regulations, and therefore you do not have to build any parking, all the dorms could be built without one parking space. Had we, uh, had we built according to code in the city, when the dorms that have been built, we could have had conjunction with your dorm program. We would have had an additional 4,000 parking spaces on this campus right now. But the state felt there wasn't enough money and uh, that they didn't uh, see fit to build. And we in city government cannot force uh, the university to build according to buildings, and I would, I would certainly understand, and I'm sure you all feel too, that uh, some of the educational buildings would have to come first and then hope parking would come later. Uh, since Chancellor Murphy has been here, we have accelerated the uh, parking program. For, uh, well, we, I don't say we, the state has accelerated the parking program, but it is still far from, from adequate. And it's not going to be adequate for many years to come. And uh, I think probably even the freshmen and sophomores may have left this university, and I'm not sure still at that point whether the parking will be am ample. But uh, I would uh, certainly, as any public official would, we just as soon make you happy as, n as not, it, except that there are problems. And um, uh, other than your own problems, there are people who surround this university who have built homes and who also are taxpayers. And uh, they have worked out a regulation with the Traffic Commission and uh, with the City of Los Angeles in which a majority of the people, if they want to limit their own parking and in so doing limit your parking, they are paying a hardship themselves uh, in the sense that they have to limit their own frontage Many of you who don't live around this, this uh, university go home to the San Fernando Valley or go to various other sections of the city and you can't believe that in front of your own home, your parents would particularly like limited parking so that they could not get in and get out of their own home. So that you find that the residents uh, in this area have, have, have problems also. They're trying to live and uh, have a home life and their problems. And uh, they have so far uh, been compatible up until recent years. And uh, we haven't had the problem uh, until uh, recently. And uh, now it has been brought into greater focus in the last few uh, months, certainly. And I understand that. I wasn't born yesterday. And I have been through three elections. And we understand the problems that always occur around election time. And I would certainly be just as happy to say to the students, I can solve all your problems, but I am not uh, even attempting to say that, and I, I cannot say that I can solve your problems. And I think that uh, there has to be some give and take on the part of both the students and the homeowners, and I have told the student leadership who came to see me, although they didn't see me, they really saw the traffic department of the city, and then after seeing the traffic department then came down to see me, I said that if there is a uh, a solution of any sort that can be presented that uh, is a fair and equitable thing that we can get both sides to be concerned with and happy with. Um, I'm not sure how you could ever get both groups happy. Uh, I would certainly be interested in hearing that solution and uh, having uh, it uh, set forth so that we could uh, see if we could present it. Now, uh, I can't tell you a great deal more. Uh, I am on record with the state uh, of California, the uh, uh, head of the uh, Department of Finance, Mr. Hale Champion, uh, asking for more uh, to speed up the money and, and that, had, that they give, uh, if there's any possibility of speeding up any more money for this area to add to the parking structures. I have also, I have a letter on record uh, for night classes, and I don't know how many of you go to night school at all, probably most of you don't, but uh, whether we couldn't uh, when they, um, when they 
come in to uh, register for night classes. Uh, why couldn't at least in that case, there's uh, more than 50% availability in the parking structures. Why couldn't it be a part of registration? And uh, the fee is nominal at night. And uh, why couldn't uh, they waive possibly the fee? But I don't set fees. The university sets fees. And the university determines uh, how, you, uh, how the parking program will continue. And uh, I am sorry that the university does not build according to city standards. If they build according to city standards, every major structure that had been built on this campus would have had to have ample parking as it was built. But uh, the parking and money problems are serious in the state. And the taxpayers, uh, your parents, uh, although maybe none of your parents complain about their tax bills, but most people do. And they don't want them to go up. They're, they don't want the state to go up. They don't want the city to go up. So that we find that there are uh, money problems in general, of whether the parking uh, goes in and when it goes in and how fast it goes in. And I've heard a few uh, student complaints. And some really I'm, they hadn't blamed me for this. Uh, I've been blamed for most of it. But they said they couldn't blame me for the fees that were set on the, the price of parking, that they did realize that the university set those. So. Um, I uh, don't know what more I can tell you about the parking situation that then, then now exists. I think if we got some mass rapid transit, it would help uh, possibly uh, more people maybe wouldn't drive cars. Uh, and a lot of people uh, used to say that uh, you, you had to be rich to own a car, but in Los Angeles, you surely don't have to be rich. You have to be able to get around in Los Angeles. That's why you can have any kind of a car almost as you can put together that can run. And I, I'm not aware that all the students at UCLA have uh, what these souped up uh, sports car type of things. I think most of you are trying to get a means of transportation to get here. And your parents are providing the best they can. I'm sure that most of your parents are also aggravated over the insurance rates they have to pay when you're under 25. Uh, that also is a state problem. So if any of you can work out that problem, uh, you have a state assemblyman and a state legislature as well. Now, um, I uh, have touched upon some of the subjects that uh, I have uh, felt close to. And uh, as uh, President Kennedy did in Texas, when he talked to the Methodist ministers, uh, he opened the uh, floor for questioning. And uh, uh, not certainly that there is any comparison, except that I had great admiration and love and respect for this man. Uh, I feel that uh, this is certainly no worse than t Kennedy in Texas with the Methodist minister. So let's have the questions now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, in the pink sweater? I think it's pink. Could you stand? You mean public transportation? Um, uh, I would think that, in general, uh, an increase in any public transportation would help, and that is probably a good suggestion. Uh, I, I was not aware uh, in, on Sepulveda that uh, in that section they were not uh, running a uh, bus. Uh, we were able, with some per persuasion, to get them to add a bus to La Cienega. We were also uh, able to get a bus on 3rd Street for a while. And we had an interesting thing on 3rd Street. We got a bus in for the people on 3rd Street. And then there wasn't enough people using it. And so it was discontinued. And we, there was an editor of a newspaper over there who was very interested in that bus, as, as I was. And we were writing to people and say, ride the bus, even if you've really got no place to go, just to keep the money coming in. And so they'll keep that thing going. Well, make a long story short, they discontinued that bus. But I'll certainly be glad to uh, take uh, Sepulveda Boulevard up with the Metropolitan Transit Authority and see if we could add some transportation there. Yes, sir. Well, I said that I would be certainly uh, be glad to sit with the students uh, with reference to a uh, solution. And if it was that uh, we could sell it, I'd be glad to uh, consider it. Why 
Well, well, I have. Uh, Uh, I am not a member of the faculty of this school and I'm not an administrator of the school. <laughs> and, uh, well, <laughs> some of the students even wanted to get rid of Clark Kerr re recently, so uh, that wasn't very smart either, I didn't think. But um, uh, I felt he was a fine educator and a, a great leader for the University of California. Uh, the um, situation is, is that I cannot be responsible for the building program at UCLA. And I cannot be responsible for the parking structures other than uh, I went to the legislature as a city representative and tried to encourage them as part of an education bill to put in money for parking. I have taken that leadership. I have taken leadership with reference to asking the State Director of Finance to p try to put more money into this uh, university for parking. I have worked very hard when the dormitory program started before most of you were on campus with the former uh, Chancellor Ray Allen. Uh, we thought the dormitory program would help the parking. Uh, I am in a position that if the uh, property owners surrounding this university uh, have a sent a request to the traffic department for what they consider uh, uh, their responsibility as to what goes on in front of their homes uh, that the traffic department of the city of Los Angeles under the ch city charter uh, sets forth how those regulations are put forth. We don't put them up. The city council doesn't vote on it. We don't vote yes or no on any city regulations on the street. Uh, this is not a prerogative of a city legislator. In fact, one day I had a, uh, I have a shopping center that I'm of, of small businesses down on 3rd Street and overnight they put up regulations that said no stopping from 4 to 6. Now if you're a merchant and you have a little shopping area and you know that people coming home at night that that's one of your key times to shop. So that uh, 4 to 6 is important to a small businessman. And I went out and I, I appeared before the traffic commission and I said I thought this was an improper traffic regulation. But they had the authority and they said, Mrs. Wyman, we determine what is proper for traffic regulations and we are going to overrule your request because you don't have the authority we do. And so uh, it's very simply set forth that uh, with reference to traffic regulations, it's set under the control of the uh, traffic commission of the city and it doesn't, doesn't come to the council, nobody votes on it and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a perfunctory order from the uh, traffic department. And so therefore uh, I can do no more than encourage your university to build according to standards uh, pursuant to building buildings in Los Angeles which they don't do and I can do no more and it would seem to me you students could help a little bit on that. You're on campus. I'm not. I'm not a student here and I'm not a member of the faculty. So um, I cannot possibly uh, solve uh, uh, the building program and as you build and as you grow you're going to need more parking structures and more parking facilities. And uh, the if you were granted every parking space on the street surrounding here, it still would not solve the parking problem in this area. <laughs> Can't have all the votes. <laughs> I said you can't have all the votes. Not. <laughs> I started to read the Bruin when I just came in, and I presume it's the one you're talking about on page four. Mr. Zell's article. Yes. I haven't read it, but I saw the beginning of it. No, I haven't read it through.
I guess he'll be impeached tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Hope he's strong. <laughs> is that what true? Mr. Uh, there is a group of uh, young people from UCLA have come to uh, offer their help in my campaign. What is your question, sir? The question is, uh, do you think he was acting in your interest trying to intimidate students not to vote? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that the uh, young man uh, sent in a letter probably that he had done some work on. Uh, the letter was not uh, checked with me first. Uh, I noticed that some students uh, recently defaced some, some, some people running for office boards, which is illegal, but you find it very difficult to stop them. They want to crawl up on billboards and deface them. They, they're going to do it. Um, we also found that they have been burning some uh, traffic signs. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can you can always in life uh, find the way I guess to to be destructive or to in a sense to do what is what is wrong against a law any law laws I suppose uh, most people uh, I don't happen to feel laws are made to break and uh, I do feel that uh, law and order is important I think like the civil right marches which uh, I have been very close to that as long as they're done peaceably that they receive great results I, I think that the, uh, with reference to what you're speaking, I've not read the entire, entire article yet, but I would say that I am not sure on the law. If the law is uh, such that it's improper to register, I would think that is your business to find out. It's not mine. Yes, sir. I'll repeat it if you can't hear. Well, I might as well repeat it. Uh, in your talk, you stated that if the majority of the residents on a particular block desire parking restrictions, it should be their right to get them. However, in a recent court decision, the judge decided that this is not a valid criterion to use for setting up these restrictions, and that the restrictions on this particular block are not valid. However, the public officials responsible have flaunted this decision, have ignored it. And although I realize that you're not responsible for the enforcement of these regulations or putting up the signs, you are the representative of this district, and I'm wondering uh, what your position is. My, uh, but this is a this court case is um, the city attorney is elected by the people. Uh, maybe he's a little luckier than I am. He's running unopposed, so that I guess your votes will have to go there. But uh, um, he he is responsible for appealing the case. He is appealing that case uh, to up to, uh, I don't know what court it is now, probably District Court of Appeals. And he is responsible for making the decision as an elected public official as I am with reference to, I, I answer for legislative things, he answers for the, for the city attorney and appeals. So he is taking that case up on appeal. Now, um, I have nothing further to say. This is court action. If this court case is won all the way up, then restrictions, I would gather, would be removed by the traffic department. I think it will have to go through its legislative processes first. And I am not responsible for appealing the case. Yes, ma'am? Yes? Limited parking um, is established by the traffic commission, and the traffic commission has well, the traffic commission has set forth their own rules. The traffic commission is a five-man commission appointed by the mayor and answerable to him. The reasons are that if the property owners want to restrict themselves by better than sixty percent, they don't e accept a fifty percent. 
but if it's better than 60% of the people want to restrict themselves. No, they have to set forth, uh, my, my recollection of this is that most of these restrictions are old around here and I don't recall what first uh, established the, the policy. They're what? Well, if they could accommodate, <clears throat> if they could accommodate them, it would seem to me that they wouldn't want to place the restrictions upon their own street. Why then would they do it? Why, why then do they want the restrictions? It seems to me they're limiting themselves. I, I don't think they would think students would do anything like that. <laughs> People are, Well, uh, all I can say is that um, these restrictions have been asked for and sent to the traffic department and the traffic department has granted them. No, I can't help it, but uh, the, citizens, uh, uh, the citizens have asked for it and as I, I guess as uh, uh, the traffic commission has established the rule of thumb that they have the right to have these restrictions and until they change it there isn't uh, there isn't anybody who can uh, do much about that well let me see who's next how about over there Well, now you're taking on the police as well. So we've had the traffic department, the police, and the councilman, and that is a traffic, the enforcement of it is done by the police department. It should be enforced on both sides. There is no question. Enforce, enforcement is for both sides. The traffic commission can help you. They set the rules. They can change the rules. You, well, they're a five-man commission appointed by the mayor, and the mayor, they answer to the mayor. And uh, <coughs> five-man commission appointed, you're asking, and that's the commission is a five-man commission appointed by the mayor, and they are responsible uh, to him for the actions they take and the commission can change the rules. Legislation wise, I can. I think that uh, as long as the uh, rule is established that they have a right as well to petition the commission, that they probably will continue doing so. Well, 
Well, just like the university has paid for all individuals, right? We're all paying taxes for it. My, my opinion is, as long as the rule is established by the traffic commission, they have a right to, uh, they have a right to apply for it. I, I would have to, if, I don't know the legal termination of that, if they are all for all the people, But, but for example, you can restrict, uh, for, for example, around the Coliseum when an event comes, you can restrict the parking so that you have the right to restrict. Well, sir, you may, you may be a law student, and I don't know. You probably have the answer, and I'm not sure whether your, your preposition is. Not a single individual, I do not believe. <laughs> I think I have answered that question, sir. <laughs> well, that's being t tested in the courts right now. I do not know if they are valid or not, and it's a legal question, and the courts will determine that answer. Well, because I went to the state of California and tried to get you more parking restrictions, but I uh, parking, uh, but I can't. <laughs> when the the stu I'll be glad to. Uh, Join with the students when they have a proposal that we can present. When they have a proposal. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we, we have, I don't think that uh, I am going to satisfy your needs and your wants. And I don't think that we're going to, uh, to add anything further to this uh, questioning. You know the position of the City Traffic Commission. You know my position and you know the position of the university. And I don't think that uh, any further questions particularly will add to this uh, controversy that is uh, before us. Now, if you have a different question, uh, uh, something else that you'd like to ask, I think I have answered it. I think you have demonstrated what you need and what you want. And if I'm very aware of what you want and what you need. And I would be delighted to be all things to all people at all times, but I cannot. And I cannot pretend to do such. So there is no use kidding you. I voted against the high rise in Carthay Circle. And in fact, it will not be high rise. It will probably be six stories. Well, I have, any time the students, I have had been called upon once in 12 years by the students to hear a problem. And I met with them after they had left the traffic department in my office. And I will be glad to meet with them any time. I have been on this campus for many problems. Uh, I have been on this campus uh, uh, for other things that uh, I have been asked by uh, the administration and by students over a period of 12 years. You're here now. You only know of this problem today. But we've had many problems and many uh, uh, things that we've tried to work together on. And I'm sorry that the one issue of, of this issue uh, is, is, is the entire problem that the students uh, are concerned with. And I wish I could solve it, but I cannot. Yes, sir. <laughs> died, died down about a year and a half ago when the council decided that it would not make any public statements any further 
in answer to uh, any charges made by the chief executive. And we decided if we just wouldn't answer and we tried to talk about the issues, maybe it would uh, die down and therefore it would uh, let the charges come from one side of the street and uh, we just wouldn't answer. Twelve years. Thank you. <laughs> they overrate us. I can. I took the initiative on your first parking structure when I went to Sacramento. I tried to take the initiative. Now, uh, my husband's position in the Democratic Party has nothing to do with the city of Los Angeles. And uh, uh, his uh, official position, uh, and I, 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 all the things that were attributed that we can do, if we could do them all, I'd just have to wave a wand if I believed all the things I read, and I could just do anything in the world. But it just doesn't work that way, sir. You have to work through government. You have to work through the legislature of the state of California. You have to work through the charter, all these various things. And uh, I think that uh, you'll find that even in student government, you have to work through certain uh, ways, whether you like them or not. Up in Berkeley, they have to, uh, they've had some problems up there. They found out how they had to work them up there. Well, I don't. Uh, he's added the, I've had the happy relationship of now having three children. <laughs> <coughs> he does add something. Uh, I, I certainly would think that nobody was voting for me because of, of uh, Gene being an officer in the Democratic Party in the state. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. I hope when the judge sentences him that he's on that side. Well, well you can take it in the same sense that uh, 12 years of 12 uh, <laughs> 12 years uh, would have to it have to stand by itself, ma'am, and what I've done and what I haven't done. Uh, if, if there are no uh, other questions on any other subjects, another subject? Yes, sir. That isn't true. It isn't true. Yes, sir. Sometimes it, uh, uh, we, we make a request, uh, is sent through our office to the traffic commission. And if the commission uh, grants some, they grant some, they deny. And uh, it depends on the speed of the traffic uh, commission. Uh, and there's usually 30 lights put up in the budget because they cost about $30,000. 
So there are 30 budgeted every year. And then if any emergency situation should occur, then it has to be a supplement to that budget, provided appropriation can be granted. There is no length of time determined. He applies no more than he does uh, with anything else. You send a letter and you ask uh, and you appear before a traffic commission or you send a letter and they grant it or they deny it. And then you also transmit your constituents' letters if they are requesting it. So you are the transmittal agent between your constituents and the traffic commission. I, I understand the reason you're asking. <laughs> Go ahead. Continuously? Are you saying a stoplight or a, or a light? Well, the, um, uh, the uh, council man, when, when uh, re regulations are determined on the basis of surveys made by the department traffic, and if they don't see a need, a constituent uh, can bring a problem to you or you can initiate it. Um, the Strathmore light was, uh, had been set for um, installation before the child uh, was injured. I'm, I didn't know, I don't recall a child injury, but the, um, I recall that uh, the light was scheduled to be put in and it had been paid for and had been authorized and it's a matter of scheduling them according to crew. And so it's not based on anything other than the scheduling and if that light was already scheduled to go in. So there was no problem on that one. You can't get every traffic light and regulation that is asked for in the city because pretty soon you'd pull out of your garage and you'd stop with a boulevard. Everybody wants them somewhere. Was there one more question and then I think we'll call it most of you, uh, most everybody has left anyway. Uh, I had a field office when I was a councilman uh, about after being in office my first uh, year and a half and I, I had them in the uh, uh, various uh, public buildings within the 5th district such as a one, one day a week I was at a fire station, one day I was at another place and we found that nobody, uh, I was there without, um, uh, nobody came to the offices and so therefore uh, to establish a, um, a field office it would cost approximately twenty thousand dollars a year unless you use the public building and uh, we have made our phone is listed in the phone book and so is my deputies and we have made ourselves available to go out to constituent problems because the people didn't seem to want to come to us in the district office the office would cost twenty thousand dollars a year so in twelve years we have saved two hundred forty thousand dollars No, it wasn't. A fire station? Oh, n no, ma'am. I, I have used, a, uh, I only used, a, I used a fire station uh, on Veteran Avenue out in West LA that went up the street here. And uh, uh, it would, at no city, of, at no time would an elected city official use a Democratic headquarters. Well, Well, that is an absolute lie.
Okay. Well, we're in City Hall. We, we meet, uh, we have a session every day. We're at City Hall every day. At City Hall? Well, <clears throat> uh, I, I would have to answer you by saying that, number one, your facts are incorrect on the budget of my office, and I will make them available to you if you'd like the correct information. My office is not the third largest at all. Um, my budget is not the third largest. Uh, it, uh, it is uh, not one of the highest budgets, and we have felt that uh, we are 20 minutes from our district uh, on the, uh, the new freeway, and we are 40 minutes before that, and that we could be made available to, I go to night meetings, I go to property owners associations, I go to student meetings, I've been with the Bruin Bells, and et cetera, et cetera, over the years. And other, in other words, the, the only point I'm making is that, that we are available, and I've been, been to an awful lot of meetings day and night if we're not available to people. So we feel that our office is close and that we can get to the people and that $240,000 could be better spent than in a field office. That is my opinion. The Rapid Transit District has recently been reorganized. State Senator Tom Reese uh, submitted a bill to reorganize the Rapid Transit District. It has been reorganized, and uh, it, well, it, it's been reorganized in the sense of just new membership, that's all. And um, the bill was passed by the legislature, state of California. And uh, on this district, they are supposed to uh, come forth with some new proposals for uh, a better transit district. Uh, those um, uh, proposals, I would presume, would eventually, if uh, it, it entails tax dollars, be submitted to the people. Uh, if, it, uh, if, it, if they intend to improve it out of the fares from the buses that they're now running, I don't know how much greater improvement you can get because I'm not sure how much revenue uh, producing they are making out of it. So um, uh, the Mass Rapid Transit District is a, a state agency and the, the new bill of Tom Reese's, uh, they sh created a district but they didn't create any money so that they are going to have to have some authority for uh, uh, to, to either levy a tax or to raise some additional funds possibly before they can, uh, this is a state owned, this is not privately owned and uh, they will probably have to do something along those lines to improve uh, buses. Now they've talked about uh, an increase and a half a cent on sales tax possibly to get some money, but they will have to get permission from the legislature before they can, they can levy such a tax. Uh, the cr transit district um, is uh, an independent uh, uh, body that has been established under this new Reese bill. And uh, there's a whole new district been created to, we hope, and I presume the people hope, to um, get a better transit district.
well, uh, Santa Monica has a very small bus system, and the city of Santa Monica, of course, is very small. Uh, the uh, the uh, city of, um, and uh, that is not owned by the city of Santa Monica, that's privately owned. It's private owned. It's called municipal, but it was privately owned. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>